Welcome to Media Loss. Uh, for those unfamiliar with this series, we take a piece of obscure media and contextualize it, uh, give a little bit of backstory, some history, and any memories spurred by said media. On this episode, we're going to be taking a look at defunct Canadian retailer Eaton's through their catalog, showcasing the hottest fashion of summer 1976. That's why I shop at Eaton's. They've got a great selection there. And they don't try to tell me what I should wear. I know what's right for me. And I know I can find it at Eaton's. It's a great thing. Eaton's was a cultural institution, a revolutionized retail, and for Canadians of certain generations, the store is synonymous with shopping. It was founded in 1869 by Timothy Eaton, who implemented and popularized several policies that would become industry standards, such as selling at a fixed price and a money-back guarantee should the goods be unsatisfactory. Now I've done some reading into the conditions of the factory these goods were produced in, and they are less than stellar, uh, but really what successful business wasn't built off the exploited labor of children and immigrants? <clears throat> Eden's prospered. It was sewn into the fabric of Toronto, sponsoring the annual Santa Claus Parade, and by the turn of the century was proclaiming itself Canada's greatest store. At the time, the country's population resided mostly in rural areas and small towns. With the introduction of the Eaton's catalog in 1884, they can now access the same products at the same prices. Everything could be ordered through the catalog, from clothing to prefabricated households. The Eaton's catalog became an institution in its own right. It was a staple in homes and appeared in Canadian pop culture. A few months ago, I was browsing a second-hand store and found the spring-summer edition from 1976. I've always loved the aesthetics of the 1970s, uh, possibly because I was brought up in their shadow, despite being born a decade after they ended. Uh, these looks, the fabric on the couches, were all still relevant during my childhood, uh, mainly with the old people in my life, and I find something very comforting about it. There's a certain way you want to live with a certain kind of flair. There's songs to sing, dreams to dream when spring is in the air. And Eaton's tries to do things the way you want us to. Because Eaton's idea, Eaton's idea, Eaton's idea is all about you. Uh, predictably, the fashion is the highlight of this catalog. Uh, we're at peak 70s here, with halter tops, pantsuits, and denim dominating the style. Uh, one thing that really stood out to me was the design and page layout. Uh, sometimes it's really weird. I love knowing that they did this uh, before Photoshop and that all these techniques were done by hand and in camera. Interestingly, this is the final Eden's catalog that was ever put out. Uh, with their expansion into other markets and small towns, it was no longer necessary for people to order things via catalog. This was the year before the Eaton Center opened, a massive mall in downtown Toronto anchored by Eaton's. Uh, the company attempted to replicate this model in other cities to little success. Financial missteps, coupled with competition not only from other Canadian retailers, but also American companies expanding into the market, uh, caused Eaton's to declare bankruptcy in 1999. Uh, their assets would be acquired by Sears. In 2017, Sears met the same fate as Eaton's thanks to the rise of online retailers such as Amazon, uh, which is very similar to mail order catalogs, when you think about it. All that's left of Eaton's legacy is the original Eaton Center, in name only. Given how close we are to the US, we share a lot of their culture and nostalgia. I grew up with the Sears catalog and the Wish Book, which I have very warm memories of, but there is something familiar about Eaton's even though I didn't grow up with it. For a time, it was deeply ingrained in the Canadian identity. I think it less reflected the culture as it influenced it, and I believe it's this I feel today. If you're interested in exploring more media that's uniquely Canadian, check out our visit to the 1951 CNE, and be sure to check out other videos in the series, like our History of the Cowboys, a pop culture phenomenon. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't, and as always, thanks for watching.